So I was supposed to be on Kyle and Crystal, and I don't know if you know what happened. But they, they did that thing called canceling me without telling me I was canceled and then booked somebody else, meaning Jenk's nephew. And then they acted like I was a dick because I wanted them to tell me they were canceling me or something. Do you remember that? Kyle said, how can I tell you I was canceling you? I was busy doing the show you were supposed to be on. Which is kind of like saying to your wife, honey, I couldn't call you. I was busy fucking your sister. What? What do you want me to do? I called you immediately after I was done fucking your sister. Aren't I a good guy? So a, a funny She's thing... She's nice. A funny thing happened. This is all... A funny thing happened. Uh, Bernie Sanders was set to go on the Kyle and Crystal show. Yeah, uh, so this episode is a little bit bittersweet for me uh, because, uh, I mean, I love the fact that you got to talk to Bernie, and um, I have full faith and confidence in your, in your abilities. I know you're gonna do an amazing job, um, but I'm not in this interview, and there's a reason why I'm not in this interview. So, I mean, you could probably give the timeline better than me, but uh, they reached out to you and basically said, yeah, we'll do an interview under the condition it's only you. Correct? So Bernie said, I'll do an interview on Kyle and Crystal, but only if Kyle's not there. Now remember, you can't burn bridges with politicians. Here you go. Yes, so that was, we actually didn't reach out to them. So uh, I mean, you I say had, that, but I feel like months ago you did reach out to them and invite them. And then is, now like months later, they finally responded and they were like, sure, but only you. I actually can't, you're probably right. Because probably at the, beginning, right. at the beginning of the podcast, yeah. they probably did reach out to them. But it has been, that request been has months. long yeah. expired. So they reached out, um, that was the very first thing they led with when they reached out to me and was like, want to do this interview, but really want it to be just you. They were also kind of open on whether it would live here or with breaking points. Um, so it wasn't just you that they didn't want. It was also Sagar well, that they didn't made, want. You made it seem like. <laughs> that is funny. They didn't want Kyle. They didn't want Sagar. And they wanted to set the terms for their, their interview. And we just all went along with it. <laughs> we let Bernie dictate the terms of his interview. Uh, he hey, fuck Kyle. We, he, Bernie asked Kyle if he would sit in the corner while Bernie fucked his show. <laughs> and apparently, Kyle said yes. Let's listen, let's listen. It was relatively non-negotiable that they wanted to talk to you. That was it was very, it was my, like a hard line kind of, like, sure, was, we'll do it, but this is the condition. Yes. Yes. So, you know, am I butthurt over that? Yes. I'm very butthurt over that. I mean, I supported Bernie. But, but Bernie told you before the interview, right, Kyle? He didn't tell you after the interview like you did to me, right? Oh. At least he told you before. Yeah, okay. I just want to make sure. I just want to make sure. More than anybody in 2016, more than anybody in 2020, I got him on Joe Rogan. That's, you know, you could talk to Fah Shakir, his campaign manager. I'm the one who set all that up. Yeah. So, I think that's fair. To sort of be thrown under the bus, in a way. And whether it's Sagar or me, I mean, Sagar, he'll, he'll even tell you, he's more Bernie's ideological enemy than I am. Yeah. And so to be somebody who's more ideologically aligned with him and supported him as much as I did, and for him to just be like, I'm gonna kick you off your own show, that stung. I didn't like that. I was talking to Corn about it, and he was like, really? Why would he do that? I was like. But you let him fucking do it, didn't you? <laughs> Let me tell you how that conversation goes down if the Bernie Sanders show calls our show and says, I want to do an interview, but Jimmy Dore can't be there, just Steph Zamorano. It would be, hey, sorry, go fuck yourself. Thank you very much. <laughs> what? Why, why, why do you, why, 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 what, what? Well, you don't want me, you don't want me at his show? Why? Why would... I just, all I'm saying is I don't want the fucking one guy on the show. Why do I, you don't want to do that? Yeah, I don't want to do that because I actually have a fucking spine and I'm not a nutless wonder. And when a politician wants to bullshit me, I fucking stand up to them. I don't sit in the corner and watch them fuck my show. You know, and the weird part is I would go, well, wait a minute, you don't want soccer either. <laughs> 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 didn't, didn't, didn't Kyle once call Bernie a cuck? Yes. What? Right, right? So Bernie came back and made Kyle a cuck. That's exactly right. <laughs> oh, 
That's exactly what happened. Oh, he was gonna say, you wanna play the cuck game? <laughs> well, guess what? Guess what? I'm not only gonna cuck you, I'm gonna cuck Saga. <laughs> I'll cuck, I'm gonna cuck the whole fucking YouTube community. <laughs> Cause y'all remind me of that fucking Debbie Wasserman Schultz. <laughs> so here, so they did, so Crystal did the interview uh, and it's painful. I don't know if you've seen it, but it's super painful. Here we go. You ready? Here we go. He is prepared to deal with it. I have not seen a president in my lifetime who has done that. Am I wrong? Okay, hold, hold, hold on. You gotta... I understand your upsetness, but we have to save the booing till after the video clip plays. Because I, I'll have a, we'll have a joke for it. Starting so, from the beginning. Okay, here we go, ready? He is prepared to deal with it. I have not seen a president in my lifetime who has done that. Am I wrong? I see that perspective, but I also see a president who's willing to let a lot of those agenda items be killed by the filibuster and the parliamentarian. Well, but again, I don't want to defend him. I, I think the point you made a few minutes ago is exactly right. In this critical moment when we're dealing with the future of the planet, when we're dealing with the future of democracy, you know what? I think majority should rule and not the, I believe that strongly. What the fuck does that mean? So I, I believe, I believe that the what, what? Here we go. But don't think that he can snap his fingers, no matter what he may or may not believe, and make things happen. All right, there, there are senators. There are... Uh, yes, he can. I don't know if you know, but Joe Biden could slap his fingers right now under Section 1881A and give everybody Medicare for all. He could do that right now. And the crowd goes wild. Joe Biden could snap his fingers and give us student debt relief. Joe Biden could snap his fingers and get rescheduled marijuana. There's a lot of shit Joe Biden could do by snapping his fucking fingers. And Bernie, is what he's doing is running interference for the establishment. Why? Because Bernie is the establishment now. Jimmy, they let, they let the Senate parliamentarian who works for them kill the $15 minimum wage, who works for them, do whatever he wants. I know, that's, that will, what everybody knows that was pretend, they set it up, oh, the par look at this parliamentarian you never heard of is actually the one controlling everything. Son of a bitch. I wish Joe Biden would have ran for parliamentarian. <laughs> then we'd have a living wage. What the fuck were they thinking? Oh, if only they would have ran for parliamentarian. Here we go. There are certain things he could do, though, through executive, for example, canceling student debt. Yeah, which that's right. That, that's right. There are, there are things he can Legalizing do. marijuana. Yes. He could potentially do yes. through executive yep. order. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, there's a lot of fucking You know, I, do I sound like Richard Nixon right now? I don't know why I fucking sound like Richard Nixon. You know, Joe Biden is not a crook. I'll tell you that. He's not a fucking crook. Joe Biden is my good friend. He's my good friend. Joe Biden. <laughs> Spiro Agnew is a fucking decent guy. So there hasn't been a willingness, even though he says, yes, I support the $15 minimum wage, yes, I support the PRO Act, to use all the tools that are at his disposal to actually make those things happen. You're absolutely sure of that. <laughs> is that fair? Yes. Yes, guess what, Bernie? I have a room full of 600 people right here. Are you guys sure about that? No. No. Are you guys sure that Bernie's bullshitting us? Has Bernie turned into a gaslighting establishment fucking tool? Uh, sorry, Bernie. <laughs> but you broke my heart, Fredo. You broke my fucking heart. 
Anyway. No. I mean, in other words, you do not know about the discussions that he has with people who walk into his office. So this is the old style. You don't know what he's doing. I know what the fucking result is, Bernie. And the result is we don't have a living wage. We don't have health care. And fucking 80% of workers are bankrupt in the richest country in the fucking world. That's what I know what is happening. What are you fucking doing? What are you doing? How are you pushing him left? Jimmy, but Ron Klain, Biden's chief of staff, and you've covered this, he's liking some progressives' tweets. Boom. <laughs> Boom. The guy that gave us that. Boom. That's a great point. It takes a Canadian to see something like that. I know how much I like it when somebody famous like Norm Macdonald liked a tweet from mine the other day, and I, oh my God, I was pissy happy. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. No, it's, it's wrong to assume that when you're dealing with a United States senator who does not want to end the filibuster, that he can go in there and say, hey, I want you to do that. No. So don't give the president. Although he could do what you proposed when you were asked on the trail, how would you deal with Senator Manchin? You said, I go to West Virginia. I'd do the rally. Yep. I'd call him out. Right. I mean, there are things. You I mean, I was bullshitting when I said that. <laughs> what the fuck? You're going to hold me to the shit I said? I mean, come on. I'm a cuck now for fucking Joe Biden. And you know that. Look at your friend in the corner. He knows how to cuck. I mean, we all have to cock sometimes. That's what I'm saying with Crystal. <laughs> we have to fuck a cock. But do all that I'm saying, do not minimize. I mean, and I don't want to get into personalities, but sure. Any because Joe Biden's personality is fucking indefensible. That's why you don't want to get into it. A racist, megalomaniac, pathological, fucking warmongering liar. who you now act like is your boss instead of someone who you're supposed to fucking influence and drag to the left, that's who Joe Biden is and that's why you don't want to get in the fucking personalities because you can't the fuck defend it. Any member of the United States Senate uh, has the power to kill this thing. Yes. Yeah, and so to think that the president alone can change that is not 100% correct. Sure. Boy, if only the president was in a position of power Maybe Joe Biden should run for Senate against Joe Manchin next time. And then we could get some shit done. Apparently Joe Manchin is the puppet master and fucking, guess what, Bernie has just as much power as Joe Manchin. But it's weird Joe Manchin uses his power every five seconds and Bernie has yet to put a hold on a bill, ever. He'll never put a hold on a bill, ever. He didn't put a hold on the largest upward transfer of wealth in his human history, which was the bullshit CARES Act. He didn't put a hold on that. He voted for it. Okay. But there are executive actions that he could take. Right, student debt and other things. Come on, come on. This is getting ridiculous now. I'm getting embarrassed. <laughs> Holy shit. I picked the woman because I didn't think you'd do this shit. I'm not gonna go on with a fella because of what Elizabeth Warren said it. But anyway, the whole fucking point is. <laughs> but uh, no. We can agree on that. I am right? not, yes. You know, yeah. Joe Biden. That's the revolution, Jimmy. That's the revolution. We got it. <laughs> Bernie brought the revolution. All right, so they're talking, they're talking about the infrastructure bill, and here's what he has to say. What are your, what's your understanding right now of those pay-fors? Uh, I think the... The asset recycling? Yeah, that is... You know what asset recycling means? Asset recycling yeah. is uh, they take your ass and they sell it to a corporation, and then they get to fuck you in your ass <laughs> for money. I didn't but, but know a that. But a quarter at a time. 
So like asset is like when Rahm Emanuel sold the parking meters to a private company. That's called asset real, yeah. 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 Because you, you want to put a profit motive in a fucking parking meter instead of just giving it to the goddamn country, just the city. Anyway, so that's what they're talking about. That's what they're talking about, assets. So they're going to take private, uh, public shit and turn it to private so people can make money off it. That's called that asset relocation. Here we go. The, the idea that we privatize infrastructure, that we uh, give over roads and bridges and parking meters or whatever it may be to mm -hmm. the private sector, I think is uh, a very foolish idea. I'm not a great fan of privatization. And what they are also doing is taking money from other pots of money that were passed in previous COVID bills, which should be used later on, concern about small businesses, restaurants, uh, et cetera. So in general, the pay-fors are not good. But here is the bottom line, and this is the world that we live in. I'm gonna fucking vote for it. I'm not gonna put a hold on it. I'm not gonna do shit. I'm actually gonna fucking vote for this bullshit bill, and here's the reason why. We have 50 votes. One person says no, nothing happens. So I am willing to go along, I think, I want to see... So why don't you say fucking no, Bernie? Why don't you say no to the asset reallocation? Why don't you say fucking no to that? Why? Why? Because you're a nutless wonder and everybody sees it now, you establishment Joe Biden shill. You broke my heart, Fredo. So here he is going along with details it. of the bipartisan bill if there is 100% agreement on the part of the Democrats who are negotiating this that they are going to go along with the reconciliation package. And do you have those assurances today? No. No we That don't. is a very good question. You're fucking and right. The fate of the well, all I can tell you is if all I have All I can tell you is I'm going to go along with the establishment. That's all I can tell you. So there it is. That's Bernie Sanders in a nutshell and he's given an uh, interview to a nice lady as a guy sits in the corner and uh, watch Bernie come all over his table. So... <laughs> by, by the way, how much fucking money is that, what is that with that? Well, Bernie does, doesn't know what time, is he going deep sea diving? How does, why does he need that big of a fucking, anytime I see a guy with that big of a watch, I'm like, it's a little dick. That's what I think. <laughs> I don't even, ladies, I don't even wear a watch. <laughs> I got my watch right here. I got your fucking watch. 3 p.m. It's 3 p.m. Wait a minute. It is 8-11. 8-11. The Jimmy Dore Show is coming to a city near you August 28th. We're in Las Vegas at the Plaza. And we just added another show in Portland. We're there in Portland on September 10th and 11th. October 3rd, we're at Harlow's in Sacramento. More dates being added. Go to JimmyDoreComedy.com for a link for all tickets. See you at a live show. Mm -hmm.